Welcome family, friends, supporters, and alumni to our fall commencement exercises. Please direct your attention to the doors behind the stage as we present the class of 2018.
Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the front entrance. Graduates and honored faculty, please remain standing for the entrance of the President's Platform Party. Good afternoon, Cal Poly. Good afternoon. Welcome to Cal Poly's fall commencement for the College of Engineering. And engineers join me in helping make some noise for the graduates from the College of Architecture and Environmental Design. My name is Keith Humphrey, and it is my privilege as Cal Poly's Vice President for Student Affairs to preside over this afternoon's joyous ceremony. In celebrating our students' achievements, we would like to acknowledge that the land we meet and walk upon today carries the heritage and culture of the native Chumash people of San Luis Obispo. Cal, Cal Poly honors and respects the diverse indigenous peoples connected to this territory and respects the land on which we gather today in celebration. At this time, it is my pleasure to present Scott Glisson, who will lead Cal Poly's Chamber Choir in the singing of our national anthem. ROTC cadets of Cal Poly's Military Science Department, led by Cadet Battalion Commander Joseph Thurling, under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Zavonik will present the colors. Please rise and remain standing if you are able. And gentlemen, please remove your caps until the color guard has exited the area. Please present the colors.
Please be seated. We have so many reasons to be Cal Poly proud today. As a university, we are conferring more than 1,000 degrees upon deserving scholars. Each of our students has worked hard and encouraging them at every step of the way have been our talented and dedicated faculty and staff, as well as the many parents, brothers, sisters, other family members, friends, and supporters. Also with us today are your, your closest family members and friends who had to put up with you when you were in elementary school and acted like you knew everything. Well, today, graduates, today is your day. You can celebrate because as a Cal Poly graduate, you indeed do know everything. As, as for tomorrow, as for tomorrow, let's just say that I have a feeling there's a lot more learn by doing in your future. Graduates, from wow to now, oh come on, they ate it up at the first two ceremonies. You're, I, I know you're smart, so I'm gonna give you a second chance. Graduates, from wow to now, we have all invested a great deal in your success. You are leaving us today expected to enter the world poised to make a difference in your professions and through service to your communities. During your time in San Luis Obispo, you have improved this community, and we are confident about the contributions you will make to improve the world around you. You leave us as Mustangs United under love, empathy, and respect for others. Many of our Cal Poly students serve as ROTC cadets. Each year, we have several graduates prepared to serve in the most unselfish way. We cannot thank them enough for their willingness to serve our country, and we are indebted to all who have served in the military. At this time, I ask that all active duty servicemen and women and veterans in attendance, please stand if you are able to be recognized for your service to our country. Thank you. Joining me on the stage this afternoon are members of the President's Party, led by President Jeffrey Armstrong. Members of the President's Party can be found in your commencement program, and we are glad they are here today in celebration of our students' achievements. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce our student speaker, Roman Waskevich, from Cal Poly's ASI Board of Directors. Roman is serving as a delegate for ASI President Jasmine Fashami, who is unfortunately not able to be with us today, but sends her sincerest congratulations to her fellow graduates. Please join me in a warm welcome for Roman Waskevich. Fellow Mustangs, first and foremost, congratulations. I am so proud of you, and it is such a humbling honor and privilege to be able to speak with you all today on this momentous occasion. I'm sure the past few years have been some of the best times of your lives. With graduation and the holiday season upon us, we also enter a time full of relatives asking us endless streams of questions like what we're gonna do after graduation. For some of us, this is still a dreaded question, yet for others, it's finally a question we welcome. I'm sure another one of those questions is what our favorite part about Cal Poly was. Oftentimes, the easy answer is, it's a great school, or the location can't be beat, but that simplifies it too much. Cal Poly is so much more. Cal Poly is an incredible environment that allowed us to grow, explore our intellect, find our life's passions. It's full of some of our best friends and favorite memories. For many of us, our favorite part about Cal Poly was the experience. And through this experience, we have been given an amazing gift, an education that extends beyond the walls of a classroom. Now we return to that impending question of what we're gonna do with our life. Yes, our education will forever influence our future in our careers or further education, 
but Cal po our Cal Poly experience will influence our lives. A close friend and I once had a conversation and it boiled down to one specific idea. The greatest thing we can do for others is to share ourselves and unique gifts with them. The greatest thing that you can do as a Cal Poly grad is to share your Cal Poly experience in everything you do. So when your Uncle Bob or Aunt Betty asks what you're gonna do with the rest of your life, no matter what answer you give them, know that this education and experience are just the start to your impact on the world that you're entering. This day is yours to celebrate and graduating Cal Poly is an amazing feat. Once again, congratulations, class of 2018. Thank you, Roman. It's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Dustin Stegner, Chair of Cal Poly's Academic Senate, who will speak to you on behalf of our outstanding faculty. Dr. Stegner. On behalf of Cal Poly's Academic Senate and all of our faculty, I'm happy to welcome everyone who has come to celebrate all of the graduates' hard work and accomplishments. I would also like to say thank you to all of these graduates' families friends, and all those who have given them support throughout their lives and during their time at Cal Poly. Cal Poly students really do hit the ground running because of all the opportunities you have provided and sacrifices you have made before students first day on campus. In a little while, each graduate will be awarded a Cal Poly degree, but I think it is more correct to say that this degree is not simply given, but rather it is earned through your long, days and nights of studying, ability to persevere through difficult courses, and commitment to following through on your academic ambitions and passions, you have reached the long sought after goal. And for that, you should be proud of all that you have achieved. I am certain that I speak for all of the faculty when I say that even though you are graduating, the faculty will continue to support you on all of your academic and professional endeavors. For in your future careers, whatever they may be, we see Cal Poly's commitment to academic excellence to an educational philosophy grounded in learn by doing, moving forward beyond campus and into the world. It is the faculty's fundamental hope that your successes at Cal Poly are just the beginning of a lifelong of learning and achievement. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you, Dr. Stegner. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you the president of Cal Poly, Dr. Jeffrey D. Armstrong. Thank you, Welcome family members and guests, faculty and staff, and congratulations graduates. Well, you're in for a treat today as your speaker is Jada McKenna. Jada has spent her career helping others. Jada is the Chief Operating Officer of Habitat for Humanity. Now I know you've heard of them, but I bet you didn't know that Habitat has housed more than 13 million people in 70 countries over the 42 years it's been in operation. That's amazing and deserves a big round of applause. Before joining Habitat, Jada worked in several positions with the goal of enhancing food security or really trying to eliminate food hunger or eliminate hunger in the world. First, she served as a member of the agriculture and food team in the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. She later served as deputy coordinator of development for Feed the Future, the US government's global hunger and food security initiative and the assistant to the administrator for the U.S. Agency for International Develop Development Bureau for Food Security. In other words, Jada knows Cal Poly's learn by doing and what we sometimes call learn by doing good. Jada has an undergraduate degree and an MBA from Harvard University. Please join me in welcoming Jada. Thank you so much for that generous introduction. President Armstrong, distinguished university administrators and faculty, proud parents, family members, friends, and supporters, and of course, you, the wonderful graduating students. 
I am honored and privileged to be here today to speak and to be a part of this wonderful moment in your lives. Congratulations to you all. <laughs> This is your time to celebrate the great accomplishments you have achieved at this university and in your life and to ponder the future. You each started this journey with hopes and aspirations. You were smart enough to choose a school that encourages you to learn by doing. So you are ahead of many people because embedded in you is the will and courage to do new things. And now on this joyous day, some of you have your future perfectly mapped out, and others may be wondering what you will do tomorrow. That is perfectly okay. 20-something years after my own graduation, I could stand here and tell you that I always knew that I wanted to be serving others, that I would apply the skills I learned in business to serve others, but that would not be true. When I sat where you are today, I had never traveled to Sub-Saharan Africa, I had never spent a second on a home construction site. And I'm not sure if I knew who Bill Gates was, even though I'm sure I should have known who he was. <laughs> I am certain that years from now, you too will be doing things you never imagined, and most likely with technologies and products that you have not even invented yet. My hope and wish for all of you is that you will find that thing that makes you come alive that contribution that only you can make to the world to leave it a better place than it is now. When my parents graduated from college, they were preparing for life as two black Americans newly empowered by the civil rights movement. My father had integrated his college football team and my mother had been in the first integrated class in her high school. A whole new world of opportunity was now available to them. When I finished my MBA, I was wondering what my own opportunities would be just after the terrorist attacks of 9-11 and the onset of a major recession. You are going into a world of change, disruption, and political headwinds affecting people and cultures around the world. It's a whirlwind full of parent peril and significant opportunity. And you will have to take what you learned here and what you know to be true within yourself to forge a path ahead. So I wanna spend my time today just sharing a few nuggets that I've picked up in this journey of my own to help you continue in your journey to learn by doing. Go forth with the following three things in mind. I numbered them to make it easy for you <laughs> on this joyous day. Number one, embrace opportunities to get out of your comfort zone. Try new things, say yes to unexpected invitations, seek opportunities to discover new people and places to you, whether they be a foreign country or an area of the US or California that you had never imagined visiting. Go off the beaten path. In the summer before I started my first job out of college, I traveled to a rural village in Malawi in Southern Africa one of the world's least developed countries and one that frequently experiences drought. In a village, I sat with a woman whose nursing infant was constantly tugging at her mother's chest for more food. But the mother's breast was shriveled. There seemed to be nothing there. So the child just kept tapping and pulling. Something stirred deep within me. The world's hunger problem was no longer something distant that I had read about online or an obscure statistic. Starvation was right next to me, staring me in the face. That woman who looked to be my age did not have the freedom that I had to explore and find her best life. She was just struggling to stay alive. My life changed forever with that moment, even though I didn't know it at the time. It would be another decade until I figured out how to use my career to help people like her, but she's always stayed in my heart. Advice number two, embrace our shared humanity. Put people first. Sometimes we miss or ignore that ability to connect with a wide range of individuals. There are so many forces pushing us to stay in our bubble, in our country, in our city, in our rural area, with people who are like us and whatever we identify as. 
In many cases, we are told to be afraid of the other. But the great thing about putting yourself outside of those comfort zones is that it helps you to realize that we are all one human family. A few weeks ago, I was in Cambodia and visited a slum area surrounded by a river of filthy, dark gray water that was full of paper, plastic bottles, human waste, and God knows what else. I saw two small children who looked to be the ages of my own two sons, who were three and five, and they started walking into that dirty river water up to their knees. I was upset, but looking closer, I noticed that the children had taken plastic from a soda bottle and attached it to a plastic spoon on a string. They had twisted the string and spoon in such a way that when the plastic hit the water, the spoon would spin like a propeller. They had made a toy out of that trash. They were willing to wade knee deep in filthy water so that they could play. And at that moment, in my mind, those children became my own. What strikes me most in all of my travels and jobs is that people have the same hopes and desires. They want their kids and grandkids to go to school, to have better lives than they do, to fix up their homes to make family life better. People dream and want to do more. In other words, to be their best selves. My third and final and really the most important lesson in my journey thus far is this. Cling to your values, those things that you know to be true deep inside and that you will never regret. For me, those things have included my faith, family, and service to other. Those things never get old or boring for me. I have never, ever heard anyone say that they regretted going to their siblings or their child's soccer practice, mentoring a new employee, or volunteering on a Habitat construction site. I have many friends who have been very successful in conventional terms, money and perhaps even fame, but increasingly I find many of them asking me how they can spend some of their time, energy, and talents giving back. They want the human connection, to know that they have left a mark and to know that they will leave this earth with few regrets. You see, for them and for many people, they have realized that truly doing well must also involve helping other people to do well. At Habitat, we are fortunate to have more than 1.4 million people volunteer with us every year to help us work with families to construct homes. It's not easy work. We're often building in the hot sun or in the sticky summer humidity of a place like New Orleans. I've heard countless stories from volunteers who say that they were so uncomfortable by the heat, the sweat, and tired muscles that they thought, I must stop, I can't do this anymore. But then they look and see right next to them a member of the family who will live in that Habitat house when it is finished, working hard and not stopping. And it is in witnessing that Habitat homeowner's unflinching determination that the volunteer story turns into a labor of love and they finish the day's work. When I was sitting in your shoes, I did not know that equipping people with their basic needs of food and shelter to give them the freedom and space to come alive would be the absolute thing that has made me come alive. I challenge you to be open, to be vulnerable, and to allow yourself the opportunity to find and fuel your passion and to understand how you can apply the superior training that you have received here at Cal Poly and beyond to be successful in whatever way you define success. Allow yourself to be uncomfortable at times. Those are the moments where you gain the most knowledge about yourself and your capabilities. As you leave this university, accept that your path will zigzag. Some things will work spectacularly well, but at times you will fail, you will learn from that failure, and you will get up. Challenge yourself to name and stay close to your values, to understand the things that you will never regret, and I hope that service is one of them. I hope in the process that you discover and heed whatever it is inside of you that makes you come alive, that you listen to yourself, listen to the world around you, and discover who you are. Unlock what moves you, find your purpose, devote yourself to it, and roll up your sleeves. 
Don't be afraid to course correct or to go all in, just do it. I'd like to end today with a story about someone that we have come to know and admire in the Habitat family. family. Some of you have heard of Deshaun Watson. As a talented quarterback, he led Clemson University to a national championship, and he is now a starting NFL quarterback for the Houston Texans. Deshaun Watson grew up with his mother and siblings in government housing uh, before their life changed with a Habitat home that became his foundation. In doing interviews with us, he said, you know, I just started thinking differently. I started thinking about going to college and being able to achieve any goals I want. He studied more. He volunteered with Habitat. He found the strength and the ability to build a better life. Now, he says, I know where I was before, and I know where I want to go. I am not afraid of who I am. To know who you are, we all know what a blessing it is to be comfortable in your own skin, to come alive, know who you are, and not be afraid, to dream dreams and fulfill those dreams. That really is life's promise. You simply must do your part and search for what makes you come alive. Do it, reach for it, you will do great things. It's your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. McKenna, for, for being with us today, for inspiring our graduates, and I'm absolutely confident they can live up to the challenges that you've put before them. All right, Cal Poly, it is now that time. Yeah, you know what's coming. It's time to confer degrees earned by our candidates for graduation. Yeah. To preside over the conferral of degrees, please welcome Senior Vice Provost for Academic Programs and Planning, Dr. Mary Pedersen. Thank you, Dr. Humphrey. Congratulations again, graduates. Among the candidates for degrees today are those who are graduating with academic honors noted by the gold cords they wear. Congratulations for your hard work. Master's degrees that have met the highest level of achievement are designated as graduating with academic excellence. Bachelor's degree candidates with GPAs of 3.5 and above are designated cum laude, magna cum laude, or summa cum laude. It is now time to recognize our master's degree candidates. Graduates, let me share the significance of the master's hood that adorns your regalia. The origins of the commencement regalia date back to the 12th and 13th centuries when universities were first taking form. The hood was originally worn for warmth in cold medieval buildings. The specific lining color represents the discipline that you have now mastered. Wear your hood with pride. It connects you with the earliest traditions of higher education and denotes your scholarly and professional achievements. I am now pleased to introduce Dr. Richard Savage, Dean of Graduate Education, who will present the Master Degree Candidates. Good afternoon. Master's Degree Candidates from the College of Architecture and Environmental Design and the College of Engineering, please stand and remain standing. Faculty from the College of Architecture and Environmental Design and the College of Engineering, please stand. I'd like to thank the faculty for their support of all of our master's students. President Armstrong, on behalf of the faculty involved with our graduate programs, I am honored to present these master's degree candidates candidates on the recommendation of the faculty of California Polytechnic State University 
and by the authority vested in me by the trustees of the California State University, I now confer upon each of you the master's degree appropriate to your program with all attendant rights, responsibilities, and distinctions. Congratulations. Faculty, you may be seated. Master's degree candidates, please follow the marshals to the right of the stage. And as your name is read, please proceed across the platform where you will receive the master's hood appropriate to your degree. Esteban Guzman. <laughs> Tyler Croteau. Jared Olson. Lenoy Abidon. Eric Labouve. Eric Miller. Corey Mayer. Jake Davis. Sam Sue Nicholas Russo Reed Garmson Jill Shin. Nicholas Kellner. Jonathan Sather. Max Rosenberg. Nathan Hoyt. Nathan Bond. Jacob Chess. <laughs> Peihang Zhang. <laughs> Jia Ming Liu.
Julian Doe. Eric Harris. Sarah Danielle Padlipsky. Calvin Laverty. Alvin Sue. Michael Mullen. Shua Wen Chu. Neil Nguyen. Yes, congratulations again to our graduate master's students, and we wish you well in your professional careers. So it's now time to present our bachelor's degree candidates. I'm very pleased to introduce Christine Theodoropoulos, Dean of the College of Architecture and Environmental Design. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the College of Architecture and Environmental Design, I congratulate our new graduates. Our mission has been to give you the ability to advance the quality and value of the built environment. As Cal Poly graduates, you will transform communities with your creative inspiration, intellectual curiosity, critical thinking, and broad inquiry. You will plan cities and regions, design landscapes and architecture, engineer building systems and manage their construction. And through this work, you will be inventors, artists, analysts, interpreters, collaborators, advocates, entrepreneurs, and leaders. Each one of you has had a tremendous impact on our college. We will miss you. Keep in touch. We look forward to your future accomplishments. Faculty representatives from the College of Architecture and Environmental Design, please stand to be recognized and remain standing. Bachelor's degrees candidates from the College of Architecture and Environmental Design, please stand and remain standing. <laughs> President Armstrong, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Architecture and Environmental Design, I am honored to present these candidates for graduation. Bachelor's degree candidates, on the recommendation of the faculty of the College of Architecture and Environmental Design, and by the authority vested in me by the trustees of the California State University, I now confer upon each of you the bachelor's degree appropriate to your program with all attendant rights, responsibilities, and distinctions. Congratulations. Faculty, you may be seated. Graduates of the College of Architecture and Environmental Design, please follow Marshall Mark Cabrina 
and Assistant Marshal Phil Barlow to the right of the stage. As your name is read, proceed across the platform to be recognized. Samuel Camacho. <laughs> Melissa Mota. <laughs> Elvira Sabanovic. <laughs> Alvaro Gonzalez. Chris Gately. Libby Bonzefe. Antonio Baldazzo. Ana Lopez. Kaylee Pitt. Ryan Liu. Nate Moore. Alexander Eduardo Esser. Nate Comer. Daniel Lee. Edward Thomas Kennedy, the fifth. Brian Keene. Patrick Garcia. Ryan McIntosh. Joe Frescott. Ross Ludwig. Hamid Abulfathi. Chris Langstaff. Amanda Sandoval. Callie Nicole Alexander. Stephen Graham. Tyler Hecht. Nicholas Somera. Kaylin Ray Molay. Jessica Resta. Kale Stiverson. Joshua Muller. Jeffrey Luke, Luke Lazaro Gamboa. JT Los Banos. Alex Buchanan. And congratulations again to the graduates of the College of Architecture and Environmental Design. Let's hold.
Dr. Armstrong, I'm now pleased to introduce Dr. Amy Fletcher, Dean of the College of Engineering. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the College of Engineering, I wish the very best to all of our graduating students today. Today is a day to celebrate your past accomplishments and to look forward to your future endeavors. You have made lifelong friends, worked with passionate and dedicated faculty, faced amazing challenges, and you rose to every occasion. Your engineering education will serve you well wherever the road leads you from here. You have learned to be critical thinkers, to be problem solvers, to be innovators, and to be leaders. As engineers and computer scientists, you will play a significant role in shaping the future of our society. Take this role seriously. We are counting on you to make a difference. Every one of you has been a valued member of our engineering college community. We celebrate with you today and look forward to learning about all of your future triumphs. Congratulations. Faculty representatives from the College of Engineering, please stand to be recognized and remain standing. <laughs> Bachelor's degree candidates from the College of Engineering, please stand and remain standing. President Armstrong, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Engineering, I am honored to present these candidates. Bachelor's degree candidates, on the recommendation of the faculty of the College of Engineering and by the authority vested in me by the trustees of the California State University, I now confer upon each of you the bachelor's degree appropriate to your program with all attendant rights, responsibilities, and distinctions. Congratulations. <laughs> Faculty, you may be seated. Graduates of the College of Engineering, please follow Marshal Eric Meal and Assistant Marshal Dan Jansen to the right of the stage. As your name is read, proceed across the platform to be recognized. Caitlin Brenneman. Kevin Marshall. Austin J. Fight. Christian Matthew Quello. Justin Tomas. Vivek Shrestha. Abhinav Harihavan. Vivian Mack. Jeremy Del Aguila. Andrew Freeman. John Thompson, Luke Thompson, Kyle Taggard, Jorge Saro, Samantha Mercedes Barrett. 
Justin Foxhoven. Nicole Butler. Naraj Morar. Parker Nomara. Matthew Koch. Brady Hill. Andrew Cofano. Varsha Manjunath. Alexandra Pavano. Nick Gatehouse. Derek Lance. Jesse Smith. Nico Rush. Kyle White. Paul Van Keppel. Ross Goldberg. Kyle Schnorr. Jim Sherman. Luke Edward Williams. Jonathan Nicholson. Jonathan Pouts. Tyler Laird. Joe Eckstein. Margaret Elizabeth Kennedy. Marie Noel Scholl. Diana Ordaz. Haley Arsvold. Junior Gonzalez. Danny Riedemann. Samantha Bickart. Emily Vasilev. Christopher Morale. Jordan Levy. Eric Stafford. Kara Irvin. Michaela Clements. Matthew Whitman. David Twyman. Shane Villapondo. Ryan Nguyen. Brock Andrew. Bryce Peterson. Aaron Kahn. Adrian Eaton. Devin Bodmer. Joey Corretto. James Jeffrey. Paul Gamara. Wilson Leong. Riley Olson. Shannon Fong. Garrett Frells. Ben Fu. 
Patrick Zyla. Ethan Fedor. Corey Fredrickson. Marshall Cuff. Brett Klotz. Sarah Means. Andrew Ruchenko. Taylor Kramer. Tommy Nord. Jacob Heaney. Tyler Meskin. Brandon Puccini. Lisa Kusakabe. Alidad Gazvini. Anita Suv. Sebastian Seibert von Falk. Austin Quick. Jin Chow. Michael Lay. Daniel Sabse. John Howard. Neil French. Bevan Tang. Lara Lu. Kodiak Waldahl. Jacob Holder. Brandon Gary. Mitchell Keller. Aaron Fisher. Hayes Kimball. Calvin Wynn. Hasham Muhammad Ali. Mauricio Gomez. Willie Raga Okpobwa. Jose Flores Martinez. Robbie Huerta. Emilio Eduardo Santos Juarez. Clovis Jahan. Jose Kirajima Borges. Zach Wilson. Alexander Samietz. Hans Hustus. Daniel Chavaria Alfaro. Marco Santini. Joseph Schmidt. Evan Huber. Zach Dix. Paul Hubner. Ryan Conrad. Nate Latavek. Natalia DeCock. 
Michael James Hostetler. Michael Hutchison. Hulan Orgil. Alex Borsotti. Ryan Couchman. J.R. Otan Ofano. Jeffrey Winecoop. Kenneth Maxwell Levy. Christopher Prince. Lanson Eto. Stephen Johnson. Kyle Frank. Tia McNaughton. Sierra Seal. Andrea Levy. Aaron Williams. David Griffith. Christian A. Garcia. Jacob Friedhoff. Alessandro Worsham. Alessandro Worsham. Aruna Barocher. Carlos Garcia. Svea Love. Daniel Alanis. John Francis Reyes. Tin Nguyen. Jeremy Ebniyamin. Colin Wong. Nathan E. Cheng Lee. Arnold Bachagal. Christina Walden. Paul Rathhammer Ruiz. Eric Burstead. Riley, Riley Carnes. Gina Osborne. Colin Eaton. Aaron Quinn. Kristen Schmidt and Kellen. Emily Neal. Sean Patrick O'Donnell. Cynthia Yu. Nicole Rexwinkle. Cecilia Yoon. Galen Wu. Matthew Brown. Max Jason Modi. Matthew Halverson. Lexa Hall. Jay Matsumoto. Tyler Mastromate. 
Justin Zwan. Nicholas Filippa. Matthew Bluestein. Emily Grace Lago Anderson. Dmitry Petrovic. Benjamin Michael Scott Kennedy. Zachary L. Michael Utinko. Devin James Grove. Katie Brayman. Kennedy Michelle Garrett. Megan Martella. Marison Manalo. Kenji Anzai. Elena Fabino. Brett Glidden. Ahmed Shorab. Tara Fossil. David Witt. Esther Unti. Michael John Adorable Hilleman. Zeph Nord. Patrick Lawrence the third. Ryan Wilbur Galston. River Drake. Brian Wilbert Gesselton. Nicholas Benitez. Lauren Borromeo. Anthony Trujillo. Chornpeet Singh. Jason Safaverdi. Amara Karens. Jesus Corona Perez. Grayson Miller. Let's give a final congratulations to the graduates of the College of Engineering. I know, we're pretty proud of all of our graduates too. They're pretty amazing. Now many of the proud supporters in the audience today have a familiar and exceptional sense of pride at this moment. Today marks an extraordinary day for the families of Cal Poly graduates who have chosen to continue their Mustang legacy. Many of you in the audience are Cal Poly proud alumni and may remember with vivid clarity the sense of pride and excitement that you felt when you graduated from Cal Poly. At this time, 
I would like to welcome anyone in the audience, the proud families, supporters, friends, parents, brothers, and sisters who are Cal Poly proud alumni. Please stand and be recognized. Welcome home. Welcome home. You are always part of the Mustang family. And now it is my pleasure to introduce to you Ellen Cahoon, Assistant Vice President for Alumni Outreach, who will welcome our graduating class into the community of Cal Poly alumni. Thank you, Dr. Humphrey. Welcome home, alumni. That was fantastic. And I get to say to you, Congratulations, alumni, for the very first time. As a fellow graduate of Cal Poly, it's my distinct honor to welcome you to the 195,000 strong community of Cal Poly proud alumni. It's also my pleasure to give you your first gift as an alumnus, and it's a gift from the Alumni Association as our newest members. So you may see that you received a bag when you came in today. Reach into your bag and find the Cal Poly Proud pin as I lead you in our traditional alumni pinning ceremony. As you do, I will invite Roman back up to the podium. Alumni, please stand with your pin. This is a learn by doing exercise. And as you stand, Please pin the graduate next to you with the symbol of your belonging to the Cal Poly Proud alumni family. And remember, you will always represent Cal Poly. You will network together. You will hire one another. Some of you might even marry one another. Am I right? So remember to come home often, support one another, and stay Cal Poly Proud. Congratulations. Guests and graduates, please rise and enjoy the music ensemble's performance of Cal Poly's alma mater, All Hail Green and Gold. As they're leaving the stage, please join me in one more round of applause for our chamber choir for providing fabulous music today. Please be seated. Now, before we can officially call you Cal graduates of Cal Poly, there is one more person who will share his wisdom, advice, and well wishes with you and your guests on this special occasion. Please join me in welcoming your president, Dr. Jeffrey Armstrong. Graduates, welcome and congratulations. We only have a lecture and a very, very brief lab. I think we can be out by six o'clock, okay? I'm just kidding. Uh, only five minutes to cover some important things and a really, really important aspect at the end. 
Today we're celebrating you because in earning your degree, you've accomplished something transfer, transformational. We've been committed to your success for many years. And now we're going to remain committed to your success in the future. Your future starts today. When you first arrived on campus, our goal was to help you to learn how to think in complex environments about complex problems. Our process in meeting that goal has been learn by doing. Learn by doing has set you up for a lifetime of success and learning. Many people have helped you along the way. Our faculty created programs and curricula designed to give you the experiences you need to be resilient in the workforce, in graduate or professional school. Together, our faculty and staff have pro provided you with the mentorship, opportunities, and guidance you have needed to get to this day. Faculty and staff, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for choosing Cal Poly. Graduates, family members, and guests, let's give our faculty and staff a huge round of applause. Graduates, your parents, grandparents, siblings, partners, spouses, other family members and friends have also supported you throughout your lives to get you to this point, to reach this amazing point today. They are very excited, especially the parents, to have you move out into the world. Right, parents? Move out into the world. Graduates, Please join us in giving these champions a big round of applause. At the same time, all of that help and support didn't get you to graduation by itself. Ultimately, it's you who chose Cal Poly and to work hard. It was you who chose to change you who chose to grow, you who took the chances, you who confronted the challenges and learned from failure, and you who reaped the rewards. So congratulations to you for all that you have done. Graduation is indeed a time of reflection, so in closing, I, I want to just cover three questions that you've asked along the way. Who am I? Where do I come from? Where am I going? You will know that these questions are important because as you ask them again and again during your life, you'll see some parts of the answers are always the same and then some others come and go. The answers that say the same are the core of your identity, part of your values, even if you don't know all of them yet. So who are you? First, you are you. We sometimes wish we could be someone else, someone more famous, more wealthy, more eloquent, but you can only be you. Everything else is taken. You are important. There has literally never been someone like you before, and there never, never will be again. The world, your family, and your Mustang family need you with your unique perspective to help it understand itself, to govern and lead itself, and to help it prosper in a way that is both just and sustainable. But you're not a finished product. At best, college is a transformative experience, and you leave Cal Poly as a different person than, than you were when you arrived. But that process of transformative change is not over. Now that you're a college graduate rather than a college student, there's much more to do. We can't wait to see what you become and see what you accomplish. So where did you come from? Where you come from is an essential part of who you are. You know things, you've seen things. You can now put pieces together that no one else can because of who you are. Whatever your religion, your race, your first language, your sexual orientation, your ethnicity, your gender identity, your hometown, you bring something essential to the table because of where you came from. You belong here. Whether your ancestors have lived here longer than memory reaches back, your parents arrived in the U.S. last year, or something in between, you belong here. You belong in the U.S., you belong in California, 
and you belong as a member of the Cal Poly family. Thank you. We are so proud now to be part of your story. We appreciate you and we care about you. And then last, where are you going? I've always loved science fiction, and yes, I'll say I love Star Trek and Star Wars. And I always love time travel. And yes, you can try time, uh, time travel. You can travel, but it's slow. There are two problems. We can only move forward, and it takes seconds, minutes, hours, and days. You're traveling into the future the least well understood and most exciting destination there is. But there's good news. You're not going alone. You have your values and your Cal Poly degree. Look around, you have colleagues, fellow alumni, and of course these amazing, amazing family members, parents, and many other supporters. We may not know what the future will be, but we can know how we intend to be what values we will live by. Graduates, please remember as you move forward into that future as an alum of Cal Poly, you have responsibilities to ensure that the value of your degree remains high and continues to grow. This is a very special family that you're joining. The quality of your degree is due to the hard work of our faculty and the tremendous success of the alumni who came before you. We will do everything in our part to continue to grow the value of your degree. On your part, we ask that each of you continue to engage with us. Each year we admit new students who will need your support, your time, and your mentorship. As you become successful in your careers and communities, please remember us, remember service, and consider giving back to those that have supported you, your families, as well as Cal Poly. Keep in touch with faculty and staff. Learn ways that you can support your major, your college, the library, student affairs, athletics, music, whatever that may be a passion for you today. But I would like to thank you for your time at Cal Poly and for the time that I hope and know you will spend with us in the future. Just as Cal Poly has changed you, you have changed Cal Poly. You have helped make us better. Congratulations. So graduates, here's the lab part. The lecture's over. Would you please stand? In order to really call this a done deal today, I would ask that you move the tassel on your mortarboards from the right side to the left this makes you a member of the Cal Poly Mustang family. So family members, guests, faculty and staff, I present to you the class of 2018. Congratulations, graduates. Congratulations. Congratulations, graduates. In the same order that they entered, our graduates will follow their marshals out of the Recreation Center, and we ask that guests remain seated as you will not be able to exit the arena until the last graduate has left. We hope that all graduates and guests join Cal Poly faculty and staff for reception at the University Union Plaza. On behalf of Cal Poly, congratulations and happy holidays.